I was lucky enough when I was in school in, in uh, the 60s to have been exposed to the field of urban design. Late 76, early 77, Norm as a sole practitioner landed a, a six month study, what to do with Granville Island. The mandate we were given was to create a people place. And uh, you know, we made it clear to our client that this might or might not work. It's not something you just turn a switch and you suddenly have a people place. We analyzed every single building. We did measure drawings of every building. There, there weren't many drawings available. And so we went in and measured and I, I sort of know every square inch of this island just from that work. In particular, we had to understand the heights to know just what types of uses might actually fit well into each of those buildings. It was really a uh, place where different types of public uses, private uses, were converging for a very dynamic city on the waterfront, a little miniature city, if you will. These two architects had a real ethos about placemaking and about livability in our cities. It was a manifestation of a youth culture that flourished in the late 60s and the young professionals of the 70s were realizing an ideal which was radically different than the formal structure of authority that came before them. When we did Granville Island, we took a lot of chances. We were breaking rules and there were a number of uh, experimentations that took place there, particularly for example, in the design of the streets, we did things that had never been done in North America before. In, in the mid-70s, uh, a lot of your access to the water was via beaches and parks. There wasn't anything urban or even industrial that you could get to to get access to the water. So that was another really exciting thing that we, I think, realized immediately. One of the great successes, I think, about Gran Granville Island, for example, is that they saw the importance of a kind of guiding governance model. The essential values that that governance model was designed to safeguard are profoundly public and profoundly human. Granville Island has been a huge influence for the development of Vancouver. It really was Granville Island that set in motion the fact that people can live and work in a downtown environment and in a very successful way to be connected with the shoreline, with the seawall, to, to mix recreation, housing, and shopping together. We did the addition and transformation of the CBC in downtown Vancouver. I mean, part of the reason they came to us is because they knew we had done Granville Island, and, and they wanted to turn that building inside out and make it a more public, lively place. You know, you look at what was previously a concrete bunker and what we've done is turn it inside out and engage it with the streets. So there's a soundstage where there's live concerts all summer. There's the TV screen which allows people to watch uh, all sorts of things, but obviously major sporting events on the street. So it's very much engaging with the street. I think the most important thing about Olympic Village is, is that what, what we've really missed in, uh, in Vancouver is actually uh, a waterfront with strong access to things like restaurants. In the Olympic Village was, I think, a, a chance to start to address that. You think you have multiple restaurants based around a true waterfront, a true activated waterfront public square, as opposed to a public square that's, that's just about greenery and walking dogs. There's a lot of work that we put into the plaza itself, setting it up so it could become a performance venue, uh, there's a play there, the, the big ribs, uh, as we call them, which are the, the big lights that illuminate the square, actually are a reference to the shipbuilding that used to occur there. So there's a sort of a more abstract playing with an industrial history. Vancouver House is directly across False Creek from Granville Island, and so one of the ideas about Vancouver House is that it would have aspects of a kind of northern, um, northern, a very dramatically visually different um, expression of Granville Island. But certainly what it is, is it provides a, a benchmark for conversation that's really important. So it actually makes a quite distinct reference to Granville Island uh, having been such an enormous landmark and the aspiration for this uh, Vancouver House to sort of be the next dimension. The sense of creating a public space under a bridge is, is obviously fascinating, radically different than maybe Granville Island, but, but I think it'll be an important dimension to this uh, uh, Vancouver house. It 
Simon Fraser University, uh, being a very large campus, realized that they had residual lands. They owned the whole mountaintop and uh, came to the conclusion back in the mid-90s that there would be an opportunity to actually bring the Burnaby community up to the mountain. Erickson's design was always in the background of everything we did. Um, we had meetings with Arthur to discuss the new community relative to the campus plan and he gave some insights as to sort of how he would imagine it. Our involvement has included really the ongoing evolution of that community from a planning point of view, urban design, design of the public realm, and the design of some of the buildings within the new community. The project in Memphis, I think it's a creation of a place out of nothing, out of an old derelict building. And Granville Island had that history of an industrial history. So all those things have contributed in Memphis to the rejuvenation of a whole part of the city, uh, very much founded on ideas from Granville Island. Granville Island, uh, over the years, really stands up well, very well, against other projects in Canada. Uh, it's often used as a precedent for uh, urban development and placemaking in this country. And I think the success, the long-standing success of Granville Island was that it still seems like a natural urban environment. I, I sort of view the work on Granville Island as having been a really important testing ground. We've had opportunities to work in China, in the U.S., in Copenhagen. I mean, I think a lot of it emanates from what we did here. In short, it's, it's the assemblage of uses and the nature of the public realm that has worked so well together and has created a place of attraction. And therefore, people have just streamed in over the years and continue to do so.